Hey guys, welcome to this episode. I'm calling, where do you draw the line? What's that thing that you are just like, you know, completely checked out? No, I will not do that. That's not happening ever. Don't even bring it up again. What? Oh, no, 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 really? Wow. Wow. TMI, people, TMI. I'm talking about guitars. What about a guitar, especially a junk guitar? You see a junk guitar and you just go, you know what? No, I'm not going to mess with that. Yeah, this is a family channel. We're trying to remember that. Does this scare you? Do you draw the line on this? The neck completely broken off which, on what's otherwise a nice resonator. It's a Rogue. Yeah, I bought this knowing that the neck had been fixed before, knowing that it was going to break again. I knew that. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. It's got a lipstick pickup on it. It's got tone volume control. It's got a resonator cone. I mean, the parts alone on this thing are worth half of what I paid for it. So, what do you do with this? Well, guess what? Let me put this off the side. You know that I have shown you on this channel how to make a scarf joint jig that does 15 degrees. I'll give you an episode right up there, right about now. Before you start thanking me and praising me, I stole this right off of Darren Dukes along with just about everything else I've done. And, and you know that with this, we make necks with scarf joints for just about anything from a license plate to, look at this puppy, a coffee can. Yeah, it's got Burnside signatures on it. There's so many signatures on it. I can't even believe it. But we are going to make a scarf joint cut by clamping this guitar down and then we're going to build a headstock like this and put this back together so sit back let me do all the dangerous stuff and you be completely and utterly dismayed so let's get to work all right guys here we go this is one of the junkiest Paul Miro junk pile guitar setups you've ever seen we have this resonator here propped up on some leftover wood and we have our 15 degree scarf joint jig that I've already said there's going to be an episode link right up there on how to build this puppy. But the idea is we've clamped this guitar in here where the headstock was broke off. Yeah, I bought it this way. It was glued. We knew the repair wouldn't hold. You start putting heavy strings on this thing and it cratered. But we're not going to reuse this one, so we're going to make our own headstock. That's the whole thing. So we've got this clamp down here, and this blade will come down at a 15 degree angle. Now, the problem is, is if this is not straight here, if it's pitched this way or this way, the cut isn't going to be right, and you will not end up with a scarf joint that looks like this this is what we want so it's really critical that we get this right here cut right up here and we want to remember there's a truss rod going down this neck and if we hit that there's going to be a blow up here like we haven't seen so we're trying to get this part cut right here and then we'll make this part on our own so how do you get this level well you could use a level like so a bubble level but that would mean that your work surface has to be completely level. Another way to do it is once you get it clamped, clamped in and you think it's close, you take one of these slide rules and measure the frets here and here's as long as it's the same, it's level this way. So let's give this a whirl.
all right look at that nice 15 degree angle this will be the headstock it will match up right here once we go into the shop you'll see this piece of Bacote wood is going to stick out like a sore thumb because we don't try to hide neck repairs we're actually very proud of them at Palmiro Junk Pile Guitars all right here we go we're back in the shed we have a 15 degree angle it just barely missed the truss rod um, you can see chick flick teal pointer is involved with some conversation with a bird or some type or another so I guess it's day off for chick flick teal pointer I'll have to accommodate myself here anyway I have taken the piece of Bacote wood marked the center here and here and now I can just simply after I consider that on the back side I'm gonna to have to replicate this over here that'll be later on but just to show you what's gonna happen I simply line up that center point like so I take a clamp there and a clamp here I take the love pencil out of the wink can and I just trace underneath here and that's going to give me this shape on this neck or this headstock so uh, then what I'll need to do is just take off the tuners and lay this on here cut the headstock shape the way I want here and make sure the tuner holes are right and lined up and then once that's all done I can take a uh, some hide glue and put it on here and also I'm going to take some uh, relic wood and make sure that I run perpendicular dowels down through here that will end up going through the fingerboard I don't care everyone will know that this neck is on here because this is going to be something very different than the rest of the guitar because again without that you won't know that it is a officially screwed up by Palmiro Junk Pile Guitars Junk Pile Guitar if I hold this here long enough like this I can get this to be the picture that attracts you to this video master of clickbait All right, there we go. There's our piece of Bacote wood for this broken headstock up here. You see that? Yeah, we just basically took a couple of patterns we had, avoided the Gibson book, open book, and cut there, but traced everything out, make sure it would all fit, and drilled the pilot holes, and now we're fixing to put the big bit to it after we countersink everything. You always want to countersink these before you drill the big bit and then run your big bit backwards at first so you don't have any tear out drill halfway through both sides then do the front All right, it is the next day. We took the clamps off and between this rasp, this small rasp from um, Stumac and nice chisel and scraper and a violin maker's knife and sandpaper, we took this down to where it needs to be it feels pretty smooth and again we protected 
the interface of the new NAC or headstock and the old NAC with simple tape. And if you don't have one of these tape dispensers, I don't know what to tell you. Best thing ever. Oh, this vise is very handy too. You can whip this around and get all the angles you need like so and do the work you need to do. Like I can go right here and catch that one, push it where I need to. Very handy. I think I have a card to give you an episode about this vice. Hang on, we're missing the most valuable piece in our tool arsenal and that is the pointer that says that episode about this vice is right up there right about now. So we're going to take this out. We're going to have Tammy sign it. We're going to oil this side and then we'll flip it over and go to work on this underside is a little bit more complicated. All right, there we go. Tammy's signature. Let's get this set up in the vise where it's where we can work on it. Now, just so you can see here, we've got the truss rod not that's got to be down in there so we're going to work on that with this chisel and we're just going to very carefully create a groove out here that comes in here to where we can get the truss rod wrench down in there and something else i want to do is i want to put perpendicular doweling down through the fingerboard of course that is going to stick up some but i've taken the slide rule and figured out exactly where I want to drill down with a pilot bit. So I'll drill down through a pilot bit and I've marked that off this way and this way with one of these. I'm going to um, use a punch to get me a starter point and then I'm going to use a small bit and then a bigger bit to match the size of the dowel. Uh, this side of the headstock needs to be ground down a little bit because it's looking a little tilted when you look at the guitar. And then I've made a template to put metal over this side of the guitar or the headstock. And then we'll put some kind of coin up here and put the tuners in and we'll be good to go once the nut is on. Okay, welcome to the scary part. We've got the new headstock glued on and I want to perpendicularly pin it against the way the loading is going to happen. And I'm going to drill a hole through the fingerboard in two spots and put a mahogany dowel in. Now, what I've done is found where I want to drill by centering the marks up over the two parts of neck that are left between the truss rod nut. There we go. And I've already cleared that out so I can put this in here. So now I'm just going to tap these two starter holes on the mark. One, two, and then drill through. Okay, next part, we're going to take some tight bond. We are going to take some dowels. And the most important part, bacon, bacon flavored toothpicks right there. Yeah. So, I scored a little bit of the tight bond in the hole. And then we're going to put the dowels in the hole after after 
after we swirl the glue around with said bacon, bacon flavored toothpick. I can't say bacon, something's wrong with me today. We'll slide those down into there, leave them stick up a little bit, and let things dry out. That neck will never come off. All right, while we are waiting for glue to dry, we made a little cover for this headstock out of some scrap metal. It's an old Alice Chalmers sign, which means it says somewhere some letters from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're just going to put these on here so we can figure out how to cut the holes in for our tuner pegs. All right, guys, that is about it. We got to make a truss rod cover and drill a couple more holes and put the nut on. But we'll wrap that up when we junk pile this thing out. What do you think of that stand? That's pretty good stuff, huh? All right, guys, there we go. Check that out. That was not that hard. We went from this to this. Well, literally a couple hours work in the shop. There was a lot of glue drying and stuff like that and kind of using your head. But um, I think the hero of the day was this 15 degree scarf joint jig. Did I give you an episode link? I think I did. But yeah, this old Rogue resonator, it's got another body issue here where the uh, input jack got bashed into the body. But other than that, it's going to be pretty good to go. I'm going to put some other stuff on here and make it unique. But yeah, the lesson is if you've got something that's shattered like that and broken up, you kind of got to get this stuff smooth. Don't try and glue this back on because the problem with it when I got it was it was kind of holding, but the minute you're going to tighten things up, the string action was that high and we can't have that. So I'm happy with the way this turned out. The worst that could happen on a guitar like this for the price I paid is I get the tuners, the cone, the electronics, and this lipstick pickup. And I could have even salvaged the fretboard off of it and been money ahead. So don't be afraid to try this stuff. I like doing these projects. Give me comments below. Give me a like if you haven't. And always subscribe. And I will see you next time.